Okay, so now that we've finished all the respiratory structures in the head and neck area, let's continue downward into the chest area. So let's back up and talk about the linings of the chest cavity. So as you learned previously, we have some serous membranes um, and the ones in the thoracic cavity are known as the pleura. And the pleura is going to have two layers, the outermost layer, the layer that lines the inside of the chest cavity, the superior aspect of the um, diaphragm, that is known as the parietal pleura. So in the models, if you have a model, for instance, as the one in the bottom right, on the right side, the lung is still there, so you really can't see the pleura, but on the left side, the lung is removed, and so all this pale blue stuff is to indicate the parietal pleura. Um, on this flat model in the middle, we still have the lungs in both places, but if you look on this right thoracic cavity side, what you'll notice is you see the ribs and the intercostal muscles and you have the diaphragm, but you notice how the lung is not going all the way into the corner. So that means that this lining here in this corner where there is no lung, that has to be parietal pleura because the other layer of the pleura, the visceral pleura, that is super glued onto the surface of the lung itself. And it goes through all the fissures, all the little nooks and crannies, goes completely around the surface of the lung. So if you look at this cut lung, this human lung, and you notice that there is this pale grayisher, wet looking surface area, that's all visceral pleura. Okay, so looking at the lungs, we have two of them. Um, but they are not made equal. If you notice, the heart sits in the midline, but because it's rotated and angled, part of the heart extends into the left side of the chest, so there is less area for lung on the left side. Let me go back. Oh, you can't see it on this picture. Um, as far as lungs go, there's only one area where all structures enter and exit the lung, and that is known as the hilum, not hilum. There's no two L's, it's only one L, the hilum of the lung. You need to write of the lung because there are multiple organs that have a hilum. Okay. So if we look at the picture on the left, what you can clearly see is this is where the airways are entering the lung, the area surrounded by the yellow circle. But there's also blood vessels. So if you look at the picture on the right, it's not only showing airways entering, it's showing both arteries and veins exiting and entering the lung. So in that area of the lung known as the hilum of the lung. Now the right lung is larger than the left lung um, and there are three views going over here. On the upper left, that's an anterior view. On the bottom left, that's a view from below. So the diaphragm would be covering that surface. And on the large one on the right, that's actually a view from the side because in the view from the side, you clearly can see that the right lung is divided into three areas or three lobes of the lung. So looking at the, the models on the right and then pictures on the left, anteriorly, the upper half of what you're normally seeing is the right upper lobe of the lung or the right superior lobe of the lung. And then most of what you normally see is going to be the right middle lobe anteriorly. And then way down in the corner, anteriorly, all you see is a tiny little bit of this quite large inferior lobe or the right lower lobe of the lung. So even though it's quite large from an anterior view on the models, you're only seeing a little bit of this. All right, so right lung, three lobes. In contrast, left lung, two lobes, okay? And anteriorly, once again, what you are mostly going to be viewing is just the left upper lobe, the more superior lobe. 
if you notice in the cadaver picture, there's only a tiny little bit anteriorly that is not this lobe. And that is the left lower lobe or the inferior lobe on the left side. So that's it for the lungs. Let's continue on and look at what happens to the airways. Okay. So as we talked about previously, we have all those C-shaped rings forming the windpipe or the trachea. And that continues down to the level of your suprasternal or jugular notch on your manubrium. So if you put your finger there, that's exactly where the trachea is going to bifurcate or split into two airways, one going to each lung. And so when we're talking about airways going to the lungs, there's actually 19 different levels of them. We're not gonna do 19 levels. Whew, thank goodness for that. At the point where they split, there is a piece of cartilage which extends upward, which is a great landmark if somebody is doing a bronchoscopy. So this is an internal structure and it's called the carina. Right there, this purple thing. This piece of cartilage going upward and so that is going to divide airflow going into the two lungs. So the first structure is a primary bronchus. So we have a right primary bronchus and we have a left primary bronchus. So I have lots of different pictures of different types of lungs. So make sure you can find these structures on them. As soon as the primary bronchus is going to split, it's now going to become a secondary bronchus. Okay. So where the yellow arrows are, I want you to, looking at the, the one on the far right, that's a secondary bronchus. And even though this looks like a continuation of the primary bronchus, this is considered a secondary bronchus because the primary bronchus has already split. And you can see that same phenomenon happening here, with primary bronchus, and then both of these would be secondary bronchi. Now, as soon as the secondary bronchus splits, it's going to become a tertiary bronchus. So we only have three layers that we use the word bronchus for. A primary bronchus is the first one followed by a secondary bronchus followed by a tertiary bronchus. After that, we are going to continue to divide 15 more times, only we're gonna be using the word bronchioles. And there were names for all of these, and we're not going to learn the names until we get to the final two bronchioles. So essentially everything after this that you see on a lung model looking like this, where you see the entire lung, once you're past counting primary, secondary, tertiary, any of these other things that you're counting, just write the word bronchial, 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 doesn't matter how big or small it is until you look at the model, which is showing the end of the airflow with these little grape-like structures, okay? So each of these little grape-like structures, these little sacs, this is where the gas exchange happens, and each one of these is called an alveolus. So yes, there's a model which shows the alveoli. It's in color for, I just have black and white pictures. However, in the normal lung, if you look at it closely, because I don't know if you notice, this is the same. This is this model right here in the left lower quadrant. If you look at it up close, it looks like this. And you see all these tiny little holes. So each one of these tiny little pink holes is an alveolus. All right. So. Hope you enjoyed that part and we will continue shortly. Thank you for continuing to work hard in this class.